persönlich. Yeah, that's a really nice uh, insight actually. Because uh, you know, like when you understand the problem exactly, then uh, you know, like uh, you go to the solution really easily and nicely. But the problem is we are not even go, able to go to the problem exactly. Because problem to know is a very big problem for us. And uh, like uh, as Devrata said. never knew we can interpret so many things just by reading about the problem that's exactly right man just by reading about the problem you can you know reach to the solution also so that's and yeah thank you very much my weekend was really nice i went to some relatives place met some of my cousins and all had fun <laughs> yeah and uh, kriplin says uh, look the deeper into the problem and found out that there are so many aspects to something that looks simple on the surface yeah right actually uh, you need to go deep into that problem and all to understand how it is and how uh, like it um, behaves and all so that you can understand it properly so before we continue uh, just a moment well sorry about the um, disturbance anyway so uh, before going on further just remember that we, we use the uh, two terms one is symptom and the cause so whatever we have been looking until now or whatever we will look till today or till tomorrow afternoon or whatever they will may be symptoms wo symptom uska cause kya hai kya nahi hai wo hum log aage dekhenge right huh. all right so uh, as a promise today we will start with the session hey rishi welcome back nishan thank you how are you i changed awesome, my shirt bro <laughs> <laughs> yeah i noticed that nice <laughs> all right so great so as i was saying to uh, our guys here that So we will looking at symptoms and the cause in this we will be moving from symptom to the cause this week so how we will do that so you are here to tell us so over to you now all right thank you uh, thank you very much have 48 participants uh i can't see anybody's faces uh all right we uh, we can we can probably you know look at that another time I will quickly start. Uh, one second. I just hold on. Just hold on. One thing I forgot. Yeah. Yeah. So guys, um, you know, like while this uh, session will be going on, at some point of time, I would request all of you to kindly turn on your camera, so can we, we so that we can have a group selfie. Like uh, other other track people, they are having a group selfie. they have a group selfie man and we don't have it's not fair man i yeah. think we should have a group selfie so please uh, add like right now no, and everyone who is like for whom it is possible to turn on their camera please turn on their camera at some certain point of time when we will tell you so that we can all have a group selfie it will be great you know yaade rahengi hamari all right over to you rishi Thank you. Uh, I'm going to share my screen. All right, uh, uh, everyone. The format remains the same. If you have any questions, uh, please drop them in the comments box or raise your hand. And Nishandul, Nishandul Neeraj will help me, you know, figure out what those questions are, and then we can answer. Uh, this is going to be a little bit tricky uh, session, but uh, I'm I'm sure you will have fun. Um, we actually just made last minute changes to it so i have uh, I, i have some hope that you will have fun all right so last week uh, we did a lot of um, we did a lot of interesting stuff one of them was to essentially figure out you know who our user is we did empathy interviews some of us did user research 
and we sort of on our on on local surface level know okay what's going on in the you know particular area um what are some of the problems that they are facing now today we sort of take all of that from the the problem jungle to now uh the next step which is um i have all of this jungle that has been created of problems now what is one specific thing which is well defined problem statement that we as a team can work on so this is the next step of uh of um of design thinking as you may remember there are five steps in design thinking i'm just going to take you back to that screen give me a second so this is the step number 2 of design thinking uh, we covered empathize uh, last week today they were going to uh, you know go in a little bit into define and next week will be ideate and then prototype and then eventually to testing uh, prototype will be taken by tabiso from what i remember so you are stuck with me this week and the next week all right we go a little bit deeper into define um so we have spent the time uh, on the field learning about people and their stories we use this opportunity to articulate problems um now sometimes what we perceive as to be problems may not actually be really problems we spoke about it briefly in the mentoring sessions also um that some problems are perceived problems but some problems are actually real problems um uh, we also have to find out ways in which we can go deeper into the problems and we'll cover some of those methods today uh but i think this is the point that i would like for you to focus on your job now is to condense all the complexities of users conscious and unconscious desires into one simple actionable statement um now while this statement may look a little bit uh difficult to look at and it it may you know look a little bit intimidating but let's and i'll i'll walk you through some of the examples of what the conscious and unconscious desires mean but essentially what you have to do uh, is you know in the empathy interviews we spoke about this briefly you don't have to just look at what the person is saying you also have to identify and understand what they are feeling um and what they not be saying and what are they saying between the lines and and this is something that uh, that in the process you will get better at this week again we'll speak to some people further down and define the problems all right um what's the format of a problem statement the format of a problem statement is quite simple um it has three major parts and this is how we bring it together my user needs what is the need because there's an insight now there are three portions to it there is the user there is the need there is an insight problem statements are supposed to be extremely simple um and and think of it this way uh, your problem statement has to be defined in such a crisp uh, articulated manner that anybody in your team can tell it to anybody else if you for instance speak to your grandmother tomorrow you can just tell them that oh yeah you know uh, nishant is a 25 year old uh a recently graduated student uh who lives in in this particular district uh in bihar who needs better uh who needs better access to uh internet because he wants to do path breaking stuff like that could for instance be a be an example of what a problem statement looks like we'll walk a little bit into the details but i would like for you to just think about this for a, for a few seconds that the problem statement is going to be quite simple we just have to go deeper into three aspects who is the user what are their needs what is the insight now i'll walk you through details of what a user means what a need means what an insight means meanwhile if you have any questions please you know keep putting them down uh, in the chat box all right user now we already know through uh, our empathy in, in uh, interviews who a user is Uh, a few other things for us to consider in mind when we are sort of uh, ex uh, you know exploring this who's the person who's affected uh, who's experienced the problem experiencing the problem can this uh, user be further specified by demography persona motivation or reason for being in that situation um to give an example of that uh for migrant crisis um the so when we are speaking of say uh, say sham who's walking from uh uh who's walking from delhi to darbhanga um we can say that sham is the user but we can also sort of take a step further to identify who is sham who like what's the part of the community he comes from and that's why we we'll say who oh, sham who's a migrant worker or sham who's a construction worker in delhi 
is walking all the way to Darbanga because there are no resources available due to the lockdown for him to come back. So we are going to go deeper into who the person is in the, some of the examples that we have uh, already spoken uh, briefly over the mentorship call. Some of us were, were focusing on students. Some of us were focusing on mental health as a space. Some of us were focusing on, um, on retail outlets, right? So when we look at the who, we'll go deeper into who that person is who's facing the problem. In the retail outlets, if there are long lines, then we say, uh, then we say something along the lines of, Consumers in this particular district of Odisha are, are, are stuck in long lines. Now we define the customer further. We define them by, uh, you know, people earning this much money or people who are coming on a Sunday morning uh, who want quick solutions to something. So we define everything properly. So who is, uh, who is defined? What is the problem? So what are their struggles? What tasks needs to be accomplished? What are their pain points that needs to be relieved? So we go a little bit deeper when we are looking at the user, we also look at their problems. What are their struggles? Is the struggle just that they want one milk packet, but they have to wait for 20 other people to sort of buy 50 other items so that they can get that milk packet. Maybe that's a problem. What are some of the other struggles? So we go a little bit deeper into all of these aspects. Um, somebody is drawing on my screen. I don't know who that is. Nishant? Nishant, can you see me? Can you hear me? I don't know how it's happening, man. <laughs> okay, we'll, we'll just call it magic. It's happening because of magic. I have you shared it? Uh, yeah, I've shared my screen, but for some reason, there are drawings. No, no, no. I'm saying like, have you shared this Canva link, editable link? Uh, no, I've not shared it with anyone. Uh, anyway, that's okay. We'll, we'll, we'll figure it out. Okay. Um, all right, so we go a little bit deeper into problems. Where does it happen? So where's the physical context, right? Is it happening in a city? Is it happening in a town? Is it happening in a, in a room? Is it happening at a house? Is it happening at a particular district? Is it happening in the entire country? Where does it happen? And why does it matter? Uh, we essentially go a little bit deeper into why is this problem worth solving? What are the values that are, what values does it bring to user? What happens if we take the problem and solve it? We think about all of these things when we are considering the user. Um, and I'll show you, because these are a lot of items for us to consider, uh, how do you bring it down to a problem statement? We'll also speak about that a little bit. But this is essentially an introduction to what a user looks like. Now, need. What is their need? Not just what they want, but much deeper than, much deeper than that, what is their need? Now, a need uh, is, um, uh, can be explained in various formats, but I thought uh, a story would sort of do it for us, um, and, I'll, and I'll walk you through that story of what that need is. But to give you an example, a need of uh, a need of a student who is confused about their career would be to not be confused. So the 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 students want to be aware. They don't want to be confused. They want to be aware about what's happening. They want exposure. They need exposure to be able to not be confused or or to find solutions to the kind of problems that they face in career crisis. That could, for instance, be a need. Insight is uh, when we ask whys and we go deeper into the root causes. And once we go deeper down into a root cause, we then sort of ask a few more questions and then define an insight. Now I'll give you a few examples of insight, one example of need, and then some examples of the user as, as I bring all of these things together. Example one, now imagine uh, the problem statement that we are working with is this, young working professionals who wants to eat healthy, but finds it difficult to do. So this is the large problem area that we have identified, that there are young working professionals who want to eat healthily, but find it difficult to do so. This is the problem that we have identified, all right? Let's just take it as an example one. How, do we, how would we do root cause analysis? And this is also uh, building up on top of what Abhijit sent as an email last week. We ask a lot of whys, right? Why is she not eating healthily? The answer is she orders takeaways every day. That's why she's not eating healthily. So the next question we ask is, oh, why does she order takeaway every day? The answer is her fridge and cupboards are always empty. The next question we ask is why are the fridge and cupboards always empty? She hasn't been gro grocery shopping in over a week. Why hasn't she been grocery shopping in a week? She doesn't really have the time to go to the supermarket. Now, why doesn't she have the time? Because she has long working hours and is exhausted. 
So when we ask a lot of whys about everything, now this could be either to the user or this could be as a team when you're brainstorming. When you do, this is how you come to the root cause analysis. That the root cause of this is she works long hours and is exhausted. What's the insight here? The insight is the lack of time. What's, this is the human insight. The human insight is not that she works long hours and is exhausted. The, the insight here is the lack of time. Uh, the root cause of this is that she's working lang, uh, long hours, but the insight remains there is a lack of time. Uh, and, and some of these will be a little bit difficult to sort of gather around. So please feel free to ask questions. I'm happy to repeat these multiple times and answer a few more questions. I'll walk you through a few more examples and then we'll come back to this. Another example is, this is what Abhijit shared, right? No water is coming into my house. Question number one, why number one? Why am I not getting water into my house? Maybe the tank is empty. Why is the tank empty? Because the pump is not working. Why is the pump is not working? Uh, pump exit is choked. Now, why is the pump exit choked? Not serviced in a while because I forgot. So the root cause analysis of why is the water coming into my house can stop at the pump exit is choked. But the insight is going to be, you insight is going to be a step further saying, why is the pump choked? And then you go down deeper to figure out that, oh, the pump is choked because you have not serviced a pump in a long time. And so what's the insight there? What's the human insight there? Which is a little bit more philosophical in nature. There has been a lack of routine maintenance because of which the pump is choked, because of which there is no water coming to my house. All right, I'm going to pause here a little bit before I, before I go to the next, uh, next step. Uh, Nishant, do we have any questions coming along so far? No. Um... Okay, uh, Sahil asks, why did I forget? Uh, Oh, that's a good one. Sahil, do you want to unmute yourself and quickly share what you are thinking? Uh, hello, sir. Hi, Sahil. Go on, please. Yeah, I wanted to say that this thing, this series of questions, this can go on forever. Like, why did I forget? Maybe because I have some issues with my memory or something like that. And why do I have those? Yeah. So this thing will keep, yeah. keep on going. So how to stop, like where to stop? That's a, that's a great question. Um, that's a great question. Sahil, thank you for it. Um, it's a very good question. Um, it's a very, very good question because this is something that I think, especially in my field, when I'm, I'm dealing with human insight every day, day in and day out and, you know, figuring out how to then eventually translate that into a product. Um, so the rule of thumb is you typically ask about five whys. Um, and in most cases at the fifth why you will sort of know the root cause. Uh, and the root cause, for instance, in this case could be just the third step saying, oh, in the third step, I know that, uh, you know, the water is not coming because the pump was, the pump is choked. Now, you know, the pump is choked. You then go just a one or two steps from there. Um, so imagine between three to five whys, and then going a further why, because the goal of the first three to five why is to fi figure out the exact root cause. And the goal of the next why is to figure out the human insight. Now, what we are trying to solve for here is the human insight, which is to say, um, why is the pump not choked? But we are not trying to solve for why is there a memory issue? Because why is there a memory issue is outside the bounds of what we're trying to do. Why is there a memory issue could be because lack of iodine when I grew up uh, eating food as a child, it could be because I have uh, an, 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 an Alzheimer's scene. It could be something else. So that could go into med medical diagnosis and prognosis. We are not entering that. We do three to five to get to root cause and maybe one or two Y's at max to figure out the human inside. Does that make sense? Okay, Tushli, do you want to, uh, do you want to unmute yourself and ask the question? Um, so my question is, um, the example that you to, uh, talked about in the first session, you said that um, about the uh, Dharavi slums, it was yeah. that um, uh, the actual problem, the bills coming more than expected was because of the company, because the company had a c commercial um, connection. So yes. you said we couldn't really change it. So how do, yes. how 
did you decide that you need to uh, work for the for by building the bijli budget like which why do you get uh, that's an amazing question that's an amazing question um thank you so much trishti um yes, sir. all right so i'll i'll tell you this right so in that exercise uh, what we identified the problem was higher bills um to be the problem but what we learned uh, after asking why is so, so the root cause analysis of why were there higher bills was oh people are getting a commercial connection instead of the connection that they need uh but we when we went a step further um and figured out the human inside and and then, then sort of came back to empathy and we asked them is what is their problem and they were like yeah bills are a problem but the real problem that i want to be solved for is what can i do to solve for this instead of what can somebody externally do because i don't as a user as somebody who lives in the dharav islam i don't want to fight uh, a a big commercial company who has given me a big commercial contract i want to learn what is it that i can do within my scope of spaces uh, that i can solve for so the human insight that we realized um after doing this root cause analysis and then we realized okay the commercial is the problem so that was root cause uh, but then we re- we we went back to the problem again and then in the problem we realized that the people want uh the 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 people want to be able to control it so the human insight that we realized in the second problem was people want to be able to control their spending and that is what the human insight there is people want to feel liberated people want to feel a little bit in control which which is the human insight people want to be in control in this particular situation so that is what we solved for them um and uh going back to the question that you typed um if you if you are realize that the root cause that you have identified is being caused by the system you go back to the user and find out whether solving for the system obviously solving for the system is going to you know solve for the problem completely but within the spaces of influence and and this is a heavy word but within our systems of control within the things that we can do as a user what is it that we can do now obviously we as students and we as um, citizens cannot go and rewrite the law we can perhaps change the public policy in 25 years time but can we actually translate that to something which we where we are today maybe not so what can we do with this with the resources that we have right now within the constraints that we have right now and 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 to go back and you are doing empathy interviews you will also continuously realize the constraints the constraints uh, in 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 the people who are in dharavi uh, firm was the was their circle of influences was, was their scope of influence uh, their scope of influence did not have uh, a connection in the ministry they did not have huge deep pockets and that's why we went back to the circle of influence within their constraint saying okay you cannot do all of this this is a system the larger is system problem within that what is your scope of influence with the constraints that you are in and then what can we do within that to to still take away the problem that you are facing does that make sense sushri yes sir thank you very much okay any further questions on this okay cool um if you have if you have any further questions continue typing them down uh this is going to be a little bit of um so we'll we'll have to make it a lot more interactive because these we are dealing with quite abstract concepts so we'll just take this time all right divich i see a question from you uh do you want to unmute yourself and ask uh, yes sir um Please so i'm working on uh, the problem of um bridging gap between hearing impaired and uh, um, people who can hear and speak so mm-hmm. in that case i already know in s- sort of that uh, what is the problem right mm-hmm. their problem is that they cannot hear or speak so okay. in that case what else can i ask them like what else can be the um, why questions that you are saying like right I so already... right um so so divish what i would recommend is to sort of go back and find out if this is actually a real problem for them and and this is coming from my experience and maybe this experience and in the interviews that you've done you may not uh, experience the same things so i worked on a project uh, a, a long time ago uh, it was called uh, i think it was called led so what we did is um, we created a indoor navigation system for the visually impaired and this is back in 2013 2014 using rfid so they can navigate themselves so when i when i went and asked them saying oh you do not have vision uh, is that a problem and they were like no this is my reality and what 
what is normal for you is that you can see and touch things. What is normal for me is that I touch and feel them to identify what they are. Sometimes what we may perceive to be a problem uh, may not actually be the problem. So step number one would be to identify whether this problem that we have perceived that, oh, you know, uh, people who are not able to speak, uh, have speech impediments or have the hearing imp impairments, um, have problems because of that. That may not really be a problem. The problem could be a step further. The problem could be that they are not able to communicate outside um, with the people who do not know sign language, for instance. That could be a problem, but, which, but a physical disability may not in itself be a problem. Does that make sense? Divich? Yes, sir. Okay, do you have a follow-up to me? Because I feel that you will have a follow-up question for me here. Um, actually, yes. Um, the, pro the idea or the problem that I'm addressing is um, is the same. That I'm trying to... Um, my problem that I identified is that uh, these people cannot communicate out outside their, um, you know, com comfort zone. Okay. So, in that case, I have already uh, asked some people and they say that, yes, uh, they may feel the problem. Uh, but the problem is that I can only ask the caretak caretakers or uh, the people who are, you know, uh, with them, as you said last week, I cannot ask directly the people who are facing this problem. So does that make any, uh, you know, um, difference? Should I ask directly the people who are facing this problem? Uh, yeah, so, so we'll discuss a little bit more in detail. I think we can probably take it for the mentoring sessions. But um, the, 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 the easier way of sort of answering this is, if you've done the interviews with stakeholders, try to also have a stakeholder in the presence uh, with the carers and have a conversation with somebody, you know, who is facing hearing disabilities or speech impediments and try to understand their story a little bit further. Uh, in my experience, what I, what I learned when I was working with the visually impaired community is that it did not bother them as much that they couldn't see. Um, and and the people who were confident within that, within the visually impaired community could very openly speak and were very, very hilarious. They could like joke around, they could navigate their way. Uh, but there was other spectrum of people who did not have a lot of confidence. So the human insight that I realized in my project that time was within the visual, visually impaired community, there is a set of users who feels underconfident to be able to communicate. So the human insight is a confidence problem and not an accessibility problem per se. Confidence problem leads to not being able to communicate with, with people outside their comfort zone. And that is the human inside there. Instead of, oh, um, um, you know, it's, it's more of a technology problem. It's more of an accessibility problem. But, but we'll talk about this in a little bit more detail. We can probably speak, speak on this one-on-one. -on -one. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. Thank you. Okay, perfect. Um, Okay, Debrata, uh, what uh, do you want to unmute yourself and ask the question? Yes, sir. Am I audible? Yeah, please go on. I see so, Sachin Tandulkar, though. That's, that's my profile picture back from 2013, I think. <laughs> okay, go on. I just wanted to know that if we don't uh, get to interview people who are uh, getting affected by the situation, then what else mm -hmm. can we do? Like, we are working on a problem of communal tension. So it's more of a okay. system systematic approach that we have to get uh, how can we user define that problem and what to do if we don't get to interview people who have uh, been in those riots so. right so so what i would uh, so i'll walk you through a little bit in the stakeholder situations here so and and this is a great question Ibrata, right you know in some cases you will for instance not really be able to get in touch with them they may not be able to having a conversation uh, if you're speaking of, say, acid attack victims, if you're speaking of riots, if you're speaking of, um, uh, you know, rape survivors, we'll not be able to get access to them easily. What typically works is you do a proxy, right? In college, sometimes if somebody's not going to college, other another friend of them is going to give a proxy attendance. Proxy is a very similar sort of format on the internet and here. Uh, you, if you are not able to find the exact user, find somebody within the circle of influence of communal tensions. Now, who's going to be a proxy for this particular data set um, or a, a segment, right? A proxy in this particular case could mean um, a, a marginalized community that you have identified. Uh, it could be from either of the groups who have faced the, faced the brunt, of, uh, brunt of a riot. 
It could, for instance, be a space where the violence broke out a couple of years ago. It could be somebody in Gujarat, for instance, who have, uh, oh, I may get into trouble for saying this, but uh, if somebody from the Gujarat riots uh, in a particular area has seen those riots, get in touch with them. If you're not able to reach out to them, there, and if there is no way in which you can have that communication at all, um, and nobody's ready to talk to you, nobody's willing to talk to you, nobody's willing to sort of share their details because they, they fear their own safety, you look up documentaries that have been made uh, on those riots in India uh, and look at documentaries, not news. News is, uh, news is a telling of a story. Documentary is a documenting of a story. And when you're documenting a story, there is no bias involved in it. You are looking, I mean, there are obviously human biases, but you're looking at the facts and the way they played out instead of an interpretation of what played out. So you look, you look at documentaries uh, that, are, that are there in riots. Um, and just a trigger warning, this can also be very distressful, so be aware of that. But there are documentaries that have been made on the Gujarat riots. There are documentaries that you can see in the US of the riots that have happened there, various other communal tensions. You will see documentaries that have been made there. Um, and that can give you that insight. Does that answer the question? Debrita? Yes, sir. Thank you. Okay, cool. Perfect. So I'll start sharing my screen again. Hopefully uh, nobody's going to paint on it this time. Let's see. Um, all right. Uh, quickly walking. Uh, okay, this we already covered. Um, what was the problem sphere and what was the insight, right? Now let's go to a thirsty crow. Uh, now, when we were having this conversation, I realized that uh, uh, so just before we started this conversation with all of you, uh, Dheeraj, I and Nishant were having a discussion and we realized that there could be a confusion between uh, a problem statement, um, a need, a solution, and all of that. Um, actually, let me walk you through this first and then I'll go back to... Also, I don't know how to spell apparently. Um, so what would a problem statement look like? Let me start with the last example, which was, uh, which was you know, example that Abhijit also shared. So the problem there was there is no water. So how would a problem statement look like that? A problem statement would look like this. I need to find at home work, sorry. I need routine repairs because water supply gets disrupted due to lack of maintenance. So who's the user? I am the user. It could be Abhijit who's 28 years old, lives in Bangalore, needs routine repairs because water supply gets disrupted due to lack of maintenance. All right. Um, another example of the young working profession that I spoke to you about was young working professionals need, because the inside there was lack of time, young working professionals needs a quick and convenient solution, which is solving for the lack of time, because they like eating healthily. What is their ideal world? They want to eat healthy. Why weren't they able to? Because they, were, they had lack of time, they couldn't cook, they were eating out all the time. So what do they need? They need a quick, convenient solution so that they can eat healthy. Another example of a good problem statement would be uh, an elderly social housing tenant needs access to the internet because housing provider systems are becoming more automated. Uh, and the last one could be, and this is, this is, for instance, for me, I need to find at-home workout routine because I want to feel amazing. These are some examples of how a problem statement looks like. I'll quickly walk you through what are the things that we keep in mind? And then I'll take you to the thirsty, thirsty crow story. <clears throat> um, when we are writing problem statements, we have to keep in mind these, these items. One, we avoid proposing solutions at all costs. And I'll tell you why. Um, so when we are defining a problem statement saying, I need at-home workout solutions, uh, I need at-home workouts, workout routines, or when I say I need routine repairs, or when I say access to the internet or a quick convenient solution, I'm not proposing a solution here. I'm proposing a need. What do I need? Um, the moment we start proposing solutions, we go into the, uh, we start moving ourselves into the ideation phase, which is not the goal of this week. Um, and, uh, and, I'll, and I'll tell you a little bit more about the why. Uh, continue asking why's and why's are going to help you get to the root cause. And through that root cause, you're, you're able to, you, you will find a human inside. Reflect. So you have to continue reflecting it reflecting on the problem statement and find out if it's running true to you. If you want, you can go back to the users that you spoke to, uh, spoke to a little bit earlier 
and ask them if that as a problem statement makes sense to them if they if they are able to sort of relate with it um keep it universal avoid using jargon on unnecessary complexities i think the rule of thumb is if you explain the sentence to your grandmom will she understand it and will she get it now you can choose it to you know explain to her in bangla or or marwadi or or you know tamil but she should be able to understand the translation in a very very simple way um and the last thing the problem should be very simple for anyone to understand and ideally to retell and it's not just important that people can understand it but they should also be able to retell it so these are the some of rule of thumb so to speak to follow when you are defining a problem statement um all right now i i'm going to pause here before i get into the story and i want to understand from from uh, from the listeners today from all the students whether you are able to make sense of what a problem statement looks like and what are your current questions here any questions so far i'm going to just open my chat and see okay no questions no. on the chat so far yeah i am i audible yes you are audible please go on yeah so uh, actually uh, the problem i am working on is mental illness so yeah. i wanted to know whether the problem statement can be in the form of a negation for example uh, say i say that uh, what the problem statement we identified was trivializing mental illness to feel normal so can i say that uh, people need to stop trivializing mental illness so that their lives are you know not in danger something like that okay that's a good question no so short answer is no uh, the long answer is um uh, you have to essentially i would like you to force your thought into this format now people need to stop doing something is not a problem statement the problem statement people need to stop doing this is an approach to sol solving that problem statement a problem statement in this particular case could look something along the lines of students professionals people in their 30s indian urban youth whatever that detail may look like uh, that particular target audience that particular user or users need to find a way in which mental health becomes less stigmatized does that make sense uh, so the need would be uh, destigmatizing mental illness because they can find more sense of community like that could for instance look like a statement there right thank you okay um team for the questions everyone this is all clear so far all right so i guess there are no questions so what i will also give an example of is the difference between uh, a need and a solution and and i hope and hopefully this will sort of uh, you know help you understand that a little bit um and then we'll go a little bit um into the detailing of what do we want to do a little next next year and then sort of open conversation so we can have discussions about what this means uh how many of you know the story of a thirsty crow could you drop a comment okay only akshat satish smriti vishesh oh all right a lot of you know the story of thirsty crow uh, okay um let's see kritlin uh, would you like to tell me the story of the thirsty crow would you like to unmute yourself and tell me the story Okay. The thirsty crow. So, as far as I remember, the story was that the crow was thirsty because it was summer and he was hot from the sun, and mm -hmm. then he finds this pitcher that is a bit deeper than his beak can go in. He finds mm -hmm. the water in there, but he can't reach the water, so he mm -hmm. goes and he uh, picks up as heavy a stone as he can carry, and he drops into it, and the water comes a little up. water level mm. and he continues mm. doing that until he can reach the water amazing thank you so much for that story uh, does anyone else remembers the same version of the story or do you remember a different version of the story
Yeah, it's the same actually. All right, great. Uh, thank you so much for that, Kathleen. Um, just to repeat, uh, crow is thirsty. It's a hot summer day, so the crow is thirsty. Needs water. Uh, wants to drink water. Is not able to find water for long, long times. Finds a pitcher, but the the bee cannot reach, so he uses the stones and gets to the water eventually. Now. let me give you an example of what that means and how that relates to a problem statement right uh, as a, as the title of the story says it's a thirsty crow right uh, how how am i going to define my user there is my user is a crow on a hot sunny summer day that's my user uh, what does a crow need the crow needs water why does the crow need it because he's thirsty what's the inside there the inside there is the crow is thirsty all right um now the crow finds the crow finds a pitcher of water so there is some water but the beak is not reaching so there's a problem there oh how do i reach water so then what the crow does what what does the crow do the crow goes and starts taking um little pieces of small small pebbles starts putting them in the water and slowly the water rises uh now what what i would like for you to think for yourself is uh when i say that the problem is that a crow on a hot sunny day needs water so that he can quench his thirst does that as a problem statement make sense to you yeah that's a complete problem statement that's a complete problem statement now what now but if you look at it a little bit differently uh right uh we could say that oh but the the crow really needs pebbles he does not need water he needs pebbles to solve for it no pebbles is a solution it's a method for getting to the water but the core need remains thirst the core need remains that the crow wants to drink water um so when you are thinking next of a problem statement ask yourself if the target audience which is very well defined on a hot summer day a crow that's a target audience what are they looking for what is their need is their need to fix the water pump or is it to get access to water is it to put pebbles and get access to pebbles or to drink water sometimes in the in the in the process of defining the problem statements where we end up is we um we start looking for solutions saying oh you know what i'm going to create an online community that will help people get access but an online community as a solution it's not the problem statement it's not a need statement the need is that people need to feel a sense of community because they are unable to connect with each other for instance um so i can i can continue going down a little bit more uh, on this but I want to like pause a little bit more here and again ask if you have any further questions. Any further questions anyone all clear uh should we go ahead how do you feel All right so looks like nobody has any questions uh if you do please stop me so this is uh essentially almost towards the end of the session um uh, to to reiterate we have to look at problem statements in a way where we avoid proposing solutions we ask a lot of why's we continue to reflect we keep it universal and a problem should be simple for anybody to understand and ideally retell uh and what's the format of this the format of a problem statement is user needs dash because dash so the user yeah. needs need because there is an insight that we want to be solving for okay uh i'm going to quickly walk you through this week's exercise now uh let me see if i can open it all right so uh, i will share this uh, i have already shared this link with uh, with nishant and iraj i will also share it in the chat here so you can get access to this 
you should be able to view this. Uh, so this week's exercise is for you to um, look at the uh, look at the uh, look at look at this as a format and then go deeper. And I'll walk you through what that format looks like. So we have we have done empathy exercises. Now we have done a little bit of problem thinking. This is what we do next after you know having all of this in mind and keeping the thirsty ghost story in mind. I look at the problem hypothesis and this is where I start writing. Let's just write the thirsty crow story. Oh, there is a thirsty crow um, on a hot summer day who just needs water because uh, it's too hot for a poor bird to be flying in the blue skies. And this, this can continue going on, right? Um, and, and what we'll do is we'll probably speak to one of you and we'll do this hypothesis a little bit more. But a problem hypothesis, everything that you've been thinking about so far is an umbrella hypothesis of what a problem could look like, right? So we'll, we'll write everything here, we will not stop. And I've, I've set an entire page, if you want, you can run for a couple of pages for this. So this, in a way, will sort of help you put, put down all your thoughts that are there. The next thing I will do is I'll go to the next page and I will look at the user. Um, and in the user, I will start looking at what my target audience is. Now, in this particular case, my target audience is a crow flying in the sky, which is, which is their context on a hot summer day. All right. So that becomes my target audience in this particular case. My target audience is a crow flying in the sky on a hot summer day. Now, what are some of the stakeholders influencing the target audience? Are there any stakeholders available? A stakeholder could be other birds uh, who also need water uh, and maybe competing with him. Uh, competing with him. Uh, it could be, um, it could be, say, a group of eagles who may attack the crow uh, as he finds as he finds water it could be people who have put out water for birds um, it could be it could be anything else that may be influencing it could just be another who is also thirsty and may be able to help him find water. These are all my stakeholders. Ideally, what I would do is I would actually just put them in numbers. Oh, yeah, sorry. Um, so it becomes very clear that uh, all my stakeholders are in one place. All right, now that I have all my stakeholders in one place, um, I'm going to relook at it. I'm going to analyze it again, saying, okay, is my target audience clear enough? Is it specific enough? Is it too wide? Um, is there a demography involved? Am I able to understand their needs properly? So on and so forth, right? Then I'm going to go to the root cause analysis, right? Um, and root cause analysis essentially will sort of help you identify the need also a little bit. Uh, if you want, you can also write a crow fang in the sky on a hot summer day is my target audience. Uh, the need for them could be to not be thirsty. Thirsty. It could be a need. Uh, you can just write it down here. What is their need? Uh, in the case of, um, um, uh, in, in the case that we sort of spoke a little bit earlier on the call before, when we are speaking of um, uh, the communities which are uh, which are hearing impaired and are have speech impediments, their need to be their need could be to be better connected with everybody. Their need could be to better to be able to communicate with confidence. Their need could be to to be understood by other people. That could be their need. All right, uh, we'll go to root cause analysis. Uh, we start with the why's here. Why 
uh, why is the growth thirsty? For instance, there is It's a hot summer day and crow is not able to find water. Why is the crow not able to find water? Maybe people have people have not kept water outside, water has evaporated, etc. So we'll just keep it at say people have not kept water outside. Why have people not kept water outside? Uh, because people don't know. Why do people not know? Because people are not aware. So that root cause analysis will continue to grow. The crow example may not be the best example for doing this, but this is how a root cause analysis of that work would work. And then we come to an insight saying, okay, we as humans, how can we solve for that problem? The insight could be um, people are unaware of, about keeping water outside another insight could be people don't care about putting water outside about putting water outside uh, another another insight could be um, people don't know sorry people don't know where to put the water. This could again then be a human insight. And then what we'll do, and these are some of the examples that I've just sort of kept for your reference. Um, and the last problem statement could be a thirsty crow on a hot summer day needs to quench is thirst, which is the need. I'm thirsty, so I need to quench my thirst because, and, and this is where I'm going to, um, I'm going to do, okay, hang on. Let me look at it a little bit. Needs to quench his thirst because, hmm. I'm thinking what's a good example of writing. What's a good way of sort of, uh, Adding this, maybe I could do this. What may happen if, if the crow doesn't quench his thirst? He may fall down or um, he may die. This is a very, very bad example of showing this. I will do an exercise with one of you. So we, we, we may be able to go a little bit deeper. But essentially, this is how we are going to do. Um, this week, we are going to look at a problem hypothesis. Uh, and this could be a specific problem. This could be an, an area that you have been working on if you have a couple of ideas. Um, but you think that all of them are going back to the same problem statement. Uh, go back to the problem hypothesis. Do an entire write down of everything that you're thinking. Uh, go into the user and continue to define the user what their need um, is. Um, go deeper into the stakeholder influencing the target audience. It could be, uh, depending on the situation, it could be, you know, various other, various, various, uh, various other stakeholders, which may not be, which may even not have considered. We do a quick root cause analysis. We ask a lot of whys. We sort of come out with an insight from there that, okay, because people didn't put, oh, people didn't know where to put water. So we are going to do this. Um, so that could be an insight that, for instance, comes out of there. And then eventually we sort of uh, define our problem statement, saying on a hot summer day, um, a user needs uh, because. Again, like I said, this is a very bad example. I'm going to open the uh, open the chat, see if there's, uh, okay, are we going to be doing this as a team or individually? Okay, that's a good question. I can, I can answer that. But so far is uh, whatever we have covered, is that clear? Everyone? All right, I'm seeing a couple of yeses, which is great. Um, uh, Dheeraj, uh, 
maybe what we can do is you can probably either help me um, find someone we can do this exercise with, or we can probably find a new thing that we can run this exercise on, and then we can sort of fill this up a little bit. Sure. Yeah. Uh, I mean, uh, yeah. Let's open it up to the participants themselves. So, anyone wants to volunteer and do this exercise here with Rishi? No. So we'll take your problem hypothesis and take it forward quickly to uh, give a rundown how this exercise works that you'll be doing throughout the week. Yeah, anyone? No one's interested? Hello, so my name is Deepika. Hi Deepika. Yeah. Um, so I would like to do this. All right, so I also got requests from Smriti and Sahil. Sorry guys, I think Deepika was the faster one to sort of jump on this. Um, we'll, we'll try this exercise depending on the time we can sort of also have a conversation and maybe do another one. All right, Deepika, uh, let's do this exercise. Um, let's start with problem hypothesis. Um, tell me more about the problem that you're trying to solve. Uh, the problem we are trying to solve is Oh, just a second. Sorry for the disturbance. No worries. Um, so the problem statement we are working on is that stress, uh, stress, uh, uh, the stress has become uh, such a major issue that even a small problem that comes in our mind affects us so badly that we are ready to take a step uh, thinking in it a way that we should um, finish this life. So stress is becoming a major and major issue, I think. So that right, is what so let's, let, let's start with that, right? So uh, first, first of all, to everyone in the, uh, on the teams here, um, let's, let's not refer to uh, problem. So, uh, Deepika, what you just said right now is more of a hypothesis idea concept. That's not a problem statement. And I want to sort of make a clear distinction so that all of us are on the same page. Um, the problem hypothesis here would be um, there is a lot of stress in life. Um, we are unable to manage it or handle it. And sometimes we may tend to even decide to end life, to make it go away. This would be like a problem hypothesis, all right? Um, what I'm going to start doing a little bit more here is I'm going to take some more ideas from you. Tell me a little bit more about where this idea came from, uh, what, where this sort of problem hypothesis came into, came into your mind. So this problem hypothesis came to my mind uh, with the recent uh, situation that happened, uh, Shushant okay. case. Okay. Um, so uh, as we look at Shushant, uh, Shushant was a good actor and was having what he, uh, what we think that a person should have. But we don't know the real insight from his side that there may be things that uh, he was lacking and what made him think or do this big step. And also there are people, uh, I heard uh, Robin Williams, I think. Uh, yeah. He was a four, uh, four time winning Oscar, but mm. uh, the family issues or the marriage issues, you can say, uh, was so much that uh, he suicided. Okay. Uh, suicide and we think this was uh, family issues etc all right a few things um, a few things for 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 you to note specifically in this case um, um, is one um, 
you know it's 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 good to know where where we are coming from and what our context is and you know sort of why we are thinking about all of this but it's important that we are writing down the hypothesis we always go back to the point that we think this is why this happened we think this is why that happened right for instance we cannot say that um, robin williams died by suicide because there were family issues because there's no evidence of it unless there's an evidence we should not be going ahead and saying that uh but i read of a uh, research paper okay uh, where it is written uh, that okay that so then we we'll, then we'll research, do this yeah the research paper that informs this okay um uh, all right now now all right so we have identified all of these uh now let's sorry let's do but this is far from done now let's let's look at okay within this as a space what else is going on so what we think are think are our own focus areas within this one that i learned from you dipika the the one that you started with was there's a lot of stress uh and managing it that mm -hmm. is sort of a problem focus area the other one that you said was uh you know people are dying by suicide so what can we do about that people are dying by suicide when you all when you were also speaking you said even the little things sort of impact us a lot so i'm just going to write them write that down even little things impact us a lot causes a lot of stress this again sort of adds to my problem hypothesis saying okay these this is what we think our focus areas are uh, dipika do you have anything else in your mind that we, you would like to add here Oh yeah, we are not comfortable in sharing. Okay. We are uh, because not... at particular time we think that this is something uh, people can judge us on. We are judging. Okay. Anything else? Hmm. That's it for now, I think. Um, All right. All right. Cool. This is this is good. so what i'm doing here uh, as everyone of you may have noticed i've written down whatever story was in my mind as a problem hypothesis um and this is this is not necessarily an academic hypothesis this is my this is called a brain dump i'm dumping down all the thoughts that i've have in my mind and this can continue for one page this can continue for multiple pages but this has to come from you as a team when you're discussing this and trying to figure out okay what's going on what else is missing what else can we do so on and so forth now let's go to the user tell me a little bit more about the particular target audience that you think is most impacted or a target audience that you would like to solve for in this particular case uh, i think the most impacted audience at this time is uh, for what i am thinking um mm -hmm. the youth um because uh, what we i am talking about is um the problems that are not much, uh, not actually the problems uh, that people take it as like for example a uh, farmer okay sorry sorry i'm going to sorry i'm i'm going to i'm going to pause you there most impacted uh, audience you said is the youth but as you were discussing you said another thing that you sort of said is um most problems because of which people are dying are not really that big am i am i right to say this yes uh, like if a student suicided in 10th class because she got 8.4 pointer is actually not a problem okay for example a student um dying by suicide in class 10th even with and then 8.4 gpa okay go on 
okay so i was saying that like problem um if uh, we say it as or i term it as a uh, farmers uh, who has going through lot of financial loss they have mm. more and more debts on them so that could in my way uh, considered as a problem a big problem that okay um, he some going through a lot and he uh, the stress is so much of family that he is not able to uh, feed his children or the family not mm. able to clear his debts but the problem that um, someone said me this someone judged me on this um, um, or some other things like uh, as i told about this gpa thing uh, so that is just a society pressure that make us do that all right uh, all right a few things few things that i'd like to um, sort of point out here the uh, can please don't take this personally please to just consider it as professional feedback um, i think what uh, what i what i notice and when you are speaking is that you are sort of bringing your own judgments and your own thoughts and your own biases into the into the equation which is okay in the problem hypothesis um i would like for you to sort of understand a little bit more what uh, I, i would like for you to focus a little bit more on what mental health really means and what goes on into the mind of somebody who is taking the step of dying by suicide uh it's not that simple right um a class 10 student even though they have an 8.4 pointer but in their own eyes because their inner critique is so bad they may actually think that this is the best way for me to go ahead this is the best thing for me to do uh, so i would like for you to do a little bit more research into into mental health and suicide as a space uh, tanmay bhat has written tanmay bhat has just created um, a video on what suicide is and why it comes from and what's the psychology and the science of it um, there's another comedian called daniel fernandez who has spoken about this extensively go inside the mind of what happens because mm-hmm. if we say that a student dying in uh, uh, dying by suicide in class 10 is not really that big a deal because of which they committed suicide it is fundamentally wrong for us to say that uh, because mm-hmm. it's not about how much how big an issue is it's about how they feel about that issue which is the problem uh some people may take a drastic step even on the tiniest thing from our perspective but in their mindset in their perspective that may actually be a big deal and how that comes from is something for us to look into sorry you were saying something yeah exactly that is what i'm saying that uh, for me looking at this 8.4 gp is good and even in the shushant case mm. we were thinking at the positive side not uh, not the story from his end mm. um the girl who got 8.4 maybe go, was going through some mm. family issues or something that i don't know as uh, she didn't uh, desire to share so okay. there was family stress or the social stress uh, social uh, society stre- uh, stress that she was going through and uh, which i am unaware of so there comes the same thing that people are not ready to share those things while through going through that situation um the fa- farmer in farmer case i am able to see that uh, perspective uh, but in that uh, case uh, uh, the all the stress is just in the mind okay so i'll come i'll ask you some very hard hitting questions now um mm-hmm. question number 1 when when you speak a little bit more about when i when i look at this particular person i understand why they would have committed suicide or why they would have died by suicide but in other mm-hmm. cases i don't what is more important to you right now is it more important that you are able to understand their problem and hence justify whether their death is okay or not or is it that they don't die what is the focus area there they don't die all right so the focus area then i'm going to i add another point here that um we want them to not take the step hmm. this is going to be a focus area because like i said right when 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 you're going a little bit deeper into this we sort of and when we are free flowing we are we start with oh here's an observation that a lot of people are dying by suicide but when we go a little bit deeper our own biases come into the play as a team as a society as as a collective unconscious as a collective uh, as a collective conscious right or oh, that somebody has passed away but we don't think they should have done this 
Uh, mm. But what we in that process forget is that's not even the point. It doesn't matter what we think about it or not. We mm. think that they should have a space of being able to, uh, uh, you know, appropriately communicate what they're going through. Mm -hmm. That is the problem, right? And so we sort of, again, we'll continue going deep, uh, deep diving in it. So the most impacted audience you said was youth. Now, I would like for you to define what that youth means. Uh as in i'm not able to what is the age group of the youth what is the gender of the youth are there are, are we defining youth as somebody from ages 5 to 10 10 to 15 15 to 30 what is that age group that we are talking about we have to now go deeper into that audience 15 to 30 okay 15 to 30 years of age uh, years of age okay uh, tell me more about uh, where they are from, like, are, are they based in cities? Are they just national wide everywhere? We want, we need to go more specific in this. What is the background of this? Uh, what is the background of this audience? Are they students? Are they working professionals? Because they are all different categories. Tell me more about what this audience looks like. They are students. And okay. uh, mm, so now what I'm thinking it as, uh, they are students and uh, they come from different backgrounds. Uh, they may be going through family stress, uh, but they don't show that. Uh, they have made that um, uh, positive face, which they show to the world, but there is a lot in their mind going on. Okay. Unable to share it with the outside world. Okay, so um, I'll stop here. What I'll, what I'll now start doing here is, um, is to sort of tell everyone what, what it means when we are defining somebody's persona or when we are defining somebody's background. And I'm going to start moving that this here, right? So my target audience is youth in 15 to 30 years of age, it's, which, is a good, uh, which is a good mix of uh, students and early working professionals. Uh, and I'm going to continue writing the rest of the elements here. They come from different backgrounds. They may be going through stress. They're unable to share outside the world. They keep a happy exterior, uh, but do not share, do not share what's going in their mind. I will, I will continue to add all of those elements in the problem hypothesis. This is freehand. I will write down as much detail as I want. Ideally, I would also write some of the elements of the rest of the things there uh, so that I have something in place and then I will start focusing here. But in the interest of time, I will just take five more minutes and go a little bit deeper into the user. All right, so my user is somebody in 15 to 30 years of age. Uh, now I will define a little bit, define this a little bit further. They are a good mix of students and working professionals. Now, this is what I want to understand from you, Dipika. Mm -hmm. um, this target audience is still very, very, very wide. We need to make this as specific as possible. And so let's say in, in the, at the age of 15, you are in about class 11th to 12th, uh, say class 11th. Let's start there. So do we want mm -hmm. the audience to be uh, people, students in classes 8th to 10th? Do you want them to be 10th to 12th? Do we want them to be in college? Uh, what, which of them uh, do you want to focus on now? I want to focus on after 12th. Okay. Students. After 12th to be a college. Right? After 12th and maybe the first four years of college? Yes. Till in college. All right. So this includes, uh, this is a side note, this includes any anybody who has taken a eardrop um, uh, all semester students, etc. Right. So my target audience then becomes instead of 15 to 30, it becomes 15 to 21. Or say 16 to 21. Say I, I just, I mean, this is just an example, but we can go further deeper into this. So students who have just left college, any specific reason? To, why do you want to focus on these again? Mm, uh, like taking an example. Uh, okay. Uh, mm, my very close relative, 
was uh, taking was has taken the medical stream okay so uh, he has always the fear of maths um uh, so he took the stream of medical just to escape from that uh, math factor but mm. again that physics uh, brought uh, that concept to him which he wasn't liking so mm. plus 1 plus 2 he did bio and then mm. a year drop again did bio as a subject and now he landed into the math thing again okay so he is not able to himself figure out mm-hmm. that um what what uh, what is the stream for him so he sometimes think uh keep on thinking about it and that building a lot of stress uh as not able to uh, decide what he wants to do uh but dipika i have a, again hard hitting question for you isn't that a person problem for him that he may be able to solve if he communicates so are we trying to say that the problem there is that the student is unable to decide uh, and that is causing stress uh, or that the students in that age group has stress what are we what are we focusing on we are focusing on uh, the students at that age group has stress as after plus 2 you have to decide what you want to do all right have stress for various reasons and um, once you landed into the stream you don't want it to uh, and seeing uh, the people doing it so well uh, it creates a pressure on that person that i'm not able to do good in that okay so there is a lot of stress and pressure for various reasons yes. um so so what 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 is here to note for everyone um is to realize that you know as we are going deeper we are realizing that there is not a lot of clarity in thought so we are going to start sort of bringing that back um into you know a lot more focus so now mm-hmm. our age target audience becomes students in the years of 15 to 21 years of age uh, who may have taken a year drop who've done semester students so on and so forth and 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 this is sort of what uh, what our observation is that students in that group have a lot of stress and pressure for various reasons okay now what do we think is their need when you when you spoke to a, a lot of people last week what do you think is their need a need so a thirsty crow's need was to find water to quench the thirst so the the thirsty crow's need was to quench the thirst what is the need of these students in this age group um um i don't know that i uh, as i am able to think that society don't judge them for what they are doing okay but what so that is what society will do but what is that going to do for the student uh he is able to decide um uh, his stream and do things in his own i am not able to no that's okay but what does that do so say society doesn't judge me and i'm able to choose the stream that like i want to what does that to do the student that he will be able to uh, do his best uh, in the stream he wanted okay but what does what does that do to the student mm. sahil i see um, sahil and kritlin um, i see that you have sent some comments sahil we want to unmute yourself and sort of add to this what do you think maybe the need for a student in the 15 to 21 year uh, age group yes Sahil? sir as taking yes sir as taking that example of class 10 student i would like to say that people should find happiness and satisfaction with whatever they are and whatever they you know get like they should not judge and compare with others or even if others do judge them they should not take it seriously and just be happy okay um uh, that's a very good one thank you uh kritlin rashmita do you have anything else that you'd like to add or anybody else who would like to add to what this need could be what would be the need of this target audience uh some of you are in actually some of you actually are in this audience what do you think a need is in this particular case 
And again, going back to the example, the need of the thirsty crow was to quench his thirst. What would be the need of this? Say, um, as I very clearly mentioned, you know, they could they could find happiness and satisfaction. They should be, you know, they will have freedom. Um, what do you think their need could be? To manage the stress that they're under. To manage the stress they are under. So I'm going to write some of these needs. Thank you so much for sharing that, uh, Kathleen. So one would be to find to find acceptance. It could be a need. It could be to manage stress. Uh, it could be to find happiness. Uh, Divya? Hello. Hey, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yeah, so are you able to see what a need could look like? Say, yes. uh, you know, you started with, uh, you know, student could, uh, so society could stop judging them, student can get more freedom, student will be able to choose his own stream. When I said what that could lead to is this. They may be able to find acceptance. They may be able to manage stress better. They may be able to find happiness. They may be able to experience um, experience freedom. OK, uh, is there anything else you'd like to add? What else could a student feel? What, what else may be their need? He himself is he himself or herself is able to take stand for uh, what you want to do. Right. So that is an action. But what would that result in? If I'm able to take a stand for myself, how do I feel after that? Think about it from the user's perspective. Today, I'm not able to take a stand. I'm not able to share. Tomorrow, I'm able to share. How do I feel towards the end of it? Mm, Let me give another example for every one of us to think about. Um, how many of us have gotten a little bit fatter over the lockdown? Mm, me. Okay, cool. Me too. So yeah, that is very relatable. Mm, that would be me. <laughs> all, great. So all of us have in some form or the other gained some weight. So when I gain some weight, I'm like, what am I feeling when I'm doing that? I'm feeling stressed, I'm feeling sad, I'm feeling like, oh, yo, why is this? And why am I fat? And I was fitting in my clothes, I'm not able to fit in my clothes. What am I feeling in that space? I'm feeling a little bit negative, a little bit low. I'm feeling maybe a little anxious, maybe a little sad. So what am I going to do next? Divya, do you want me to help? Do you want to help me with this? So, I'm feeling um, fat, what will I do next? Uh, I will be under stress. I'll be under stress, so that's what I'm feeling. But what would I do next? Now that I'm feeling all of this, what would I do next? I'd question myself, why am I feeling sad about this? Or why am That's I getting fat? Absolutely. So I'm going to ask all these questions. And I have asked these questions. Now, if I have to take an action to not feel this. I'll, make a, I'll make a workout routine for myself. And I'll promise myself I'll start it from the next day itself. Perfect. So I'll make a workout routine. All right. So now I have... I was feeling uh, sad, depressed, sad, whatever, you know, all list of things. And I also thought about why am I feeling this way, which is a little bit more introspective. And then I'll be like, oh, I'm feeling all of this because I'm, I'm, you know, I'm feeling fat and maybe I can do something about it. And once I do something about it, maybe I will not feel this way. Every humans, every animals, every living organisms goal is to go from state A to state B. And if a state A is negative, it is to go to a better state. It is always about getting to a better state and not feel anything sad, bad, lonely, whatever that may look like. So now I've created a workout routine. I've created a workout routine. I've stuck for it to 10 days. And now I'm now what happens? Divya, I want to learn from you. What happens now? I have a workout routine. I've created it. Now what am I feeling after that? What am I feeling after I've created a workout routine? Um, for... A workout routine will work for a few days and... Uh, Say it works for a few days. Let's stick with that, right? The workout routine has been taken. It works for a few days. How am I feeling now? Uh, feeling positive. I'm feeling positive. Okay. All right. Just... What else am I feeling? Everybody else can jump in. So um, I have started working out because I was feeling sad. I was not feeling good about myself. So now I have started working out and I'm, being, I'm sticking to it and sometimes I fail, but I go get back to it. I'm making a routine. 
and say I start losing weight, I start becoming fitter. How am I feeling now? I'll feel happy, satisfied, and proud for myself. Absolutely, I feel happy. I feel satisfied. I feel proud. I feel fitter. I f- I don't feel as negative. Maybe the negative things come now and then, but I I feel that I experience confidence. Confidence comes back into me, right? So what am I doing here? I'm looking at where was I in state A? How was I feeling? What was an action that I took to go away from that feeling? And eventually, how will I feel, right? the thirsty crow was feeling thirsty he was feeling drained there was a lot of sun there was a lot of energy that was going out what was the action he did he searched for a he searched for water finally found water couldn't access water so he put pebbles in it that was an action and eventually he quenched his thirst and how did it feel he sa- he felt satisfied felt calm he felt like he could fly again right so this is what empathy means i'm able to understand how a, how a student is feeling and once i do something i find out what they get to so a need typically is what do i need to what do i want to get to next what is my need my need for instance in this particular case will be to find acceptance my need will be to manage stress better my need could be managing freedom in my weight loss example my need would be to feel more confident about myself my need would be to feel better about how i look at myself i i would like to look at myself in a more positive way it could be to not feel sad it could be to not feel lazy right so what would my need be my need would be to be my need will become the the eventual emotional state that i want to get into i want to feel happy i want to feel accepted i want to sense freedom i want to be able to run around i want to be able to do all of this and when i do a facetime with my friends if i do a whatsapp call with my friends if i do an instagram live i should look hot right so how will i feel after that i will still feel excited liberated so on and so forth does that make sense yes So now let's do the Sir, same exercise. Ah, huh, go on. Shouldn't we add something like we should know or know the consequences of the actions we're gonna take? Like if somebody is feeling stressed and you know he starts smoking, of course it's gonna help him for a little while, but he should know the you know is it the right thing to do or not? Something like that. Okay, so that's a that's a good question. Uh, what I would do there is I'm going to first identify whether whether that is fitting with the problem statement or the problem area that i'm working with uh so what you just said is as a result of stress they may take actions which may have long term consequences right but we have to find out if that sort of fitting in with the larger thing that we are trying to solve um and if that is going to go back into the same umbrella for instance uh right now what i'm trying to solve for is the students for instance need to be able to manage their stress better they need to feel acceptance they have a lot of stress they have a lot of pressure so what i want to solve for is that they should be able to communicate better for instance they should be able to find acceptance but this would be a very tangential thing to speak about this will not sort of contribute in this particular thing so what i would do is i would actually put down that thought in this that mm-hmm. some students may some students students may start doing things which they don't know the long term consequences for so i'll just make a note here and i will see if it fits fits back into my problem statement okay um, all right this because this ha ah, go on this because uh, see when once you have you know you are dealing with problems in your studies or your school or your college now you start another thing it may help you for a little while but when that thing is going to show its bad effects now you are more stressed so it's kind of elevate elevating your stress no absolutely so that, that's a, that's a great point you know? no that's a great point but what i'm going to do is since this will this is not technically fitting into my target audience or my proper need i'm not going to put it here i'm going to put it up and see where else can i put it can i for instance keep that as an observation in mind when i'm designing the solutions can i also keep that in mind can i for instance do an education about it or something else okay all right coming back to this uh okay we are on we are above time let's let's try to close it in the next 10 more minutes uh target audience is say 15 to 21 years of age these are students uh after 12th in college across colleges um 
what is their need their need is to be able to manage stress their need is to be able to find acceptance there is able to find happiness freedom uh, dipika anything else that you would like for me to add here no i was thinking the same it covers all i think all right it's all about finding happiness and acceptance okay, okay. cool so now we are going to look at stakeholders what are all the stakeholders that are influencing target audience so stakeholders are all the people who are affecting the target audience either directly or indirectly so who are and and uh, guys i will open this for everyone actually now so that we can do it a little bit faster who are all the stakeholder influencing influencing this for people I, i'll start with the first one uh, yeah okay family family okay family. who else friends teachers is there anybody else influencing the target audience right now in this particular case one of the ways of thinking this could be uh think about all the people uh who are sort of in the life of of the user who can sort of influence them and impact them it could also be movies uh, movies are not directly impacting them but it could also sort of change the movies entertainment that they're looking for it could be youtube uh or instagram influencers who they're looking for, looking after our own expectations say that again our own expectations our own expectations is a great answer actually i'm going to put self okay so i'm going to sort of keep doing this as an exercise till i feel like okay there are no more stakeholders i'll continue to do this exercise find out everybody that's influencing and typically what we'll keep it to is a uh, direct layer of influence direct layer of influence will be family friends teachers actually let me make this here again so it will be a lot clear direct and perhaps indirect so what i'm going to put do is i'm going to put movies and youtubers etc in indirect and i'm going to put the rest in direct all right so these are all the stakeholders that are influencing now root cause analysis so it's it's a longer exercise and i think all of you will will be able to do this on your own but i will i'll quickly sort of go back to it right uh, what is what what was the problem hypothesis that we looked at now we we have a bunch of focus areas right uh, we are not comfortable sharing with the fear of judgments there's a lot of stress uh, there's a lot of stress we don't know how to manage it people are dying by suicide and we don't know what to do about it these are a lot of focus areas so let's look at let's look at a problem that people are facing right let's try to uh, go back here and see what could be a problem area properly that we could look at problem area could be um there is a lot of stress in students and they are not able to manage it okay so i'll go down here to root cause analysis i'll be like okay why is there a lot of stress in students dipika why is there a lot of stress in students the traditional uh, way of studying okay traditional way of studying okay now now even before we go to the next why we can see that this is not really a, a problem that we can find a root cause for right so this is a lot of the system student. problems right yeah correct this is one of the systematic problems which, which we can't really do anything about we can't really go and change an entire college curriculum right so we hit a dead end here let's just put a dead end here let's look at let's look at another aspect of this uh another aspect of the problem sort of area that i wrote was people are not able to manage stress right let's let's try and attack that uh why are students not able to 
manage stress now let's let's because, go here uh, for example because there are too many tasks and too less time too many tasks too little time okay um okay uh my question to you is do we know what stress is really and how it how it is formed and in this particular stage before i actually answer this i'm going to look into what stress actually means so let's look at what stress is define stress it can be defined as a degree of which you feel overwhelmed or unable to cope as results of pressure that are unmanageable right this is what stress actually means according to mentalhealth.org.uk so i'll come back to this and i'll be like okay uh there are too many tasks in too little time and people people are feeling overwhelmed okay people feeling over bend now herlin since you answered that question i'm going to ask you a follow up to this yeah is that an answer to why are people not able to manage stress or why is there stress in students what is that an answer to that's an answer to why is there stress I correct think. why is there stress right so that's an answer to that so we'll come back because root cause analysis can be quite tricky because we can go all over the place so sometimes we will think of an answer but immediately i'll go back and look at why um uh, is it, uh look look at my why is is this answer solving for my why or is this solving for an other question altogether so now let's let's come back to and now the question is are we solving for this are we solving for why is there stress dipika yes sir are we solving for this question or are we solving for this question uh we are solving for the next question you highlighted why are the students only for correct this? correct so now we realize that we were doing the root cause analysis in in the wrong area so we'll come back to why are students not able to manage stress now let's take answers why are people not able to manage stress harleen do you want to go for it not interested in the tasks they are assigned to not interested in the task they are assigned to okay is it an answer to why are they not able to manage stress or is it an answer to why are people not doing tasks no it will be because let's say if i don't want to do this program but i am assigned to some expected to do this but i want to do something else so any activity given will be i feel, i will feel like it's a, you know unnecessary stress for me and i Correct. won't be able to manage this so what i would what i would argue sahil is that there are tasks that a student doesn't want to do and which is adding to stress is an answer to what is causing stress and why is there stress uh, or what are the contributors to stress not why people are not able to manage stress is that would be right there right okay dipika do you want yes. to take a dig at this okay so why are not students not able to manage stress Hmm. You don't know how. Then again, it is the same thing that uh, they are no, no, not. No, no, no. Go on, go on. First, give the yeah. answer. Let me do the. Let me do the feedback loop on that. Okay. So again, in that factor, they are not able. They don't know what to do next. They don't really know what to do to manage stress. Okay. Huh? What were you saying in this? so saying na uh, the school uh, the question is also the same why are students not able to manage this is ha huh. that's what so so the so so here's the thing right why are students not able to manage this is because they don't even know how to do it that's why they are not able to do it right but is this statement in one form or the other taking you a little bit deeper into this not able to manage stress hmm right so we go a little bit deeper into this now the next question i ask is um why do students not know how to manage stress harleen why do students don't know how to manage stress 
Because earlier they had their parents doing it for them, dictating when to do what. Ha. Okay. Go on. The sentence is not over yet. Complete that sentence. Okay. So now that they are going to do everything on their own, they are being pulled into too many directions. And that's okay. So there, difficult. there are a lot of options. Okay. So now what I will do is I'll 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 ask you to go a little bit deeper in that, right? So the students do not know how to manage stress because earlier they were parents who could help them with it. Now they don't have a support system, or now they don't have access, or now they don't have, they don't have a framework. But all what is all of that leading to? And I'll make it a little bit quicker. I would I would at least want to go a little bit deeper in this. But why do students not know how to manage stress? They were never taught how to do this on their own. Does that make sense? Right. Does this help me get a little bit deeper into why students do not know how to man manage the stress? Yeah. Right. Now, uh, this is my second why. Right. Uh, what could be other answers to this? The other answers could of the same question. I'm going to give some time. Uh, sorry, give some space. Another answers could be. they are unaware what stress is also they don't even know what stress is they even don't know what's causing stress because if they knew what is causing stress they may prevent the stress rather than managing it or what's causing it right so what i'm trying to say is that root cause analysis it looks simple that oh we just have to ask a couple of whys it's not and that's why you have to continuously keep doing this back and forth as a team or with your mentors right uh, and continue going back to what are the right whys and are you asking the right whys uh, so students don't even know they they are never taught uh, so if i if i then go for instance deeper into they are never taught how to do this on their own my next question would be why do they, why are they never taught right but if if i say why are they never taught and they're like oh even the parents don't know and nobody really knows what stress is am i reading that again hits me as a dead end so then there is very little i can do there right um but i can also sort of continue here saying the the human inside actually let let me do this right they don't really know what how to let's let's go back to this why students not able to manage they don't really know how to manage stress what to do to manage stress they why do they not know they are never taught right why are they never taught so so we are realizing that this is sort of a dead end why are they never taught it will be even parents don't know there is no curriculum etc right i can go a little bit deeper but what i'm realizing here is that there is an insight here i know i know why are students not able to manage stress they are not able to because they never taught but what is the insight that i'm seeing after this the insight that i'm seeing here is that nobody really knows mm -hmm. there is no awareness about what stress is there is a lack of awareness okay so that would be my insight here but i'm able to sort of get to the root cause okay i'm going to pause here uh, guys let's let's ask all the questions we have uh, this is uh, this is not an easy space this, this needs a lot of brain power uh, let's give it 10 more minutes i am running a little late for a meeting i'm going to sort of push it a little bit but let's let's look at this what are some of the what are some of the questions that are coming in right now let's let's dig on them right away and then we'll move to the to the rest two sections How about you just unmute yourself and ask a question? That will be faster. Okay, I'll start with you, Divya. Do you have a question, Divya? Are things clear so far? Yes, so everything's clear so far. Okay, Kathleen. Yeah, all clear. Okay.
Uh, I'm looking at any other questions here. The Sorry, other question on. that we had, we, they don't even know what stress is or what's causing it. Comes back to the same insight. There is a lack of awareness. It uh, that's an absolutely right observation. It also comes back to the same thing. The insight comes back to this. Okay, no further questions. I'm just going to quickly recap what I'm going, what I'm doing in root cause analysis and how to do it right versus wrong. Sometimes we will, when we are, when we are trying to answer a why, that why may not really be the right why. Uh, why is there a lot of stress in students? Traditional way of studying, it's a dead end. Uh, can we solve for this? It's a systematic problem. They will not go ahead with it. Why is there stress? Too many tasks, too little time. Uh, so when this as an answer came in, we realized this is not the question to why a student is not able to manage stress. It's the answer to why is there stress. Then we went back again to a problem, sort of problem area, which we decided earlier, saying, okay, why a student is not able to manage stress. Then we go deeper. Then they don't really know what, uh, what to do to manage stress. They don't really mean. They're never taught. Why are they never taught? They realize that there's no curriculum for this. There is no awareness about it. And this is a systematic thing that comes out as an insight. Uh, and so what I'm going to start doing is I'm going to start writing these insights down. Uh, I did a root cause analysis. Insight is the system. Just, there is a lack of awareness systematically. And what I will also do is I will, so they, they may not be just one insight. I may do this root cause analysis. And if I look at it at different angles, because mental health specifically is such a broad, broad spectrum, managing stress is such a broad spectrum, spectrum that I will, I may have a lot of insights. So I will start writing the insights down side by side by side. I will keep putting them down here while I continue to do this as an exercise. And the next step from there is then to define the problem state. Divya, you're back on spot. Yes, sir. All right, so how do we define the problem statement here? We we'll start with the user. Who's our user? Youth. Youth, so 15 to 21 year olds. Old, say, let's students. What do they need? Acceptance and happiness. Okay, need acceptance, happiness, Etc. Etc. Uh, let, let's just say um, acceptance for now. Acceptance in what they are doing. Acceptance in, in what acceptance. they are doing. Acceptance in what they are doing. What's the because here? Because otherwise it will create a lot of mental stress on them. Because in the thirsty crow story, you said they will otherwise. If we don't, if he don't got, uh, get water, he will die. So in the same situation, if, yeah. Uh, acceptance. So what what I can do is I can sort of change the sentence a little bit. I can be like, fifteen to twenty one year old students need acceptance. By now, by could become a lo longer statement. It could be by themselves. It could be whatever else. I'll just keep it to acceptance, so that they can manage stress better, or so that they can be good at what they're doing. Or so that, and I'm giving you all these examples, right? So you're realizing that the problem statements are not one. There are multiple that are coming out of this. Uh, I'll just remove the underline. That's annoying me. Okay. Uh, I'll, I'll give another version of this. Students. Okay, now. Uh, now let's look at something else, right? Now we have looked at what do they need? Acceptance, manage stress. So managing stress would also a need, finding happiness. One thing that we've also learned is, where did it go? They, what do they actually need? What does, what does solving for managing stress create? It creates awareness. They need awareness about stress, right? 
so i can write i can add one more sentence and i i'm hoping this is confusing for all of you because this is not easy um so please ask your all the questions that you have they need awareness about mental health so that they can so that they can manage stress better another one let's let's go to another problem statement that's coming out being to find happiness acceptance manage stress uh, let's see if there's something else that can come into play so that okay now another way of looking at this problem statement is if they solve for this what happens after so 15 to 20 years uh, uh, 15 to 21 year old students need awareness or say acceptance so they can if i solve for acceptance what does that do so they can they can be more open about their problems so one thing that came into my mind like um i think that what i am uh, going through is something i am only going through but there mm-hmm. could be people uh, who are experiencing the same situation mm-hmm. uh, so if i i feel this thing that uh the problem um, i am going through is normal uh, i that it uh, it comes and we have to take steps and go through uh, so it will be uh, matlab as in we need a community uh, yes that that's a very good one problem. so that they yeah. so that they they realize that they are not alone hmm. not alone all right so i'm going to stop here we are almost at 1 um we have sort of run over our time but i think this was extremely important for us to look into so you realize that none of this even though it looks like a very simple document it's a lot of brain work which you have to continuously do right but i'm going to sort of go back to my uh, my rule of thumbs which is in the presentation let's look at let's look at this are we are we proposing solutions in the problem statements that we have written so far are we proposing any solutions is acceptance a solution no it's what they were they will feel is awareness a solution no is uh, is community a solution no right it's not a solution have we asked why is yes have we reflected a little bit yes have we kept it universal yes is the problem simple to understand yes so 15 to 20 year old 21 year old students need a community or a, a, you know a better defined would be a sense of community so that they realize they are not alone while dealing with stress or mental health problems now we can obviously simplify this particular statement much further but this is where i will stop uh, this is how the process looks like even though your problem area we started with something like oh you know sushant passed away robin williams passed away suicide even though we started with that we realized that oh while thinking while just free thinking we realized that oh the problem one of the problems that we see here in the focus area is stress and managing it right and then we further went down into a problem area that the students have a lot of stress the problem areas could also be multiple it could be a problem area is there is a lot of stress there could be student suicides problem areas could be multiple and with every problem area you will have to do the same exercise again and you will find multiple problem statements in my typical exercise that i've seen if i have done a, a problem area analysis every problem area can lead to between 15 to 30 different problem statements uh and sometimes even a hundred because just one problem area is so wide unless it's very specific that ghar pe pani nahi aa raha unless it's that which you know ki are ghar pe pani nahi aa raha because the pump is gone it's a very very specific example but in most cases it's a lot more detailed than that so there will continue identifying your problem areas continue using this template to just brainstorm 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 feel free to you know set up some time with me if you feel like to you know go a little bit deeper i'm i'm more than happy to help you with that 
we anyway have a mentoring session uh, in the in the later in the week so we can discuss a little bit later but you have to continue doing root cause analysis and what i would recommend is uh put all your thoughts in your doc on this document do not erase anything if you are doing a root cause analysis and you think there's a dead end just put there this this is this is a dead end i'm not able to go further <clears throat> because sometimes you may not be able to go further but there could be a different perspective from your team or your mentor that may be help able to help you go a little bit deeper so continue doing this as an exercise um and spend as much time as you possibly can on this uh the insights part i sort of uh, explained a little bit and the thing is even when you're trying to write down the problem statements things will continue to change this is not a fixed template the moment i realize that students need acceptance or in my weight loss example i need to lose weight i need to feel fit i need to feel confident um uh, it could be like you know rishi who is 28 years of age needs to feel confident so that or because he's feeling ashamed or because he's feeling sad or so that he can feel better about himself so that he can speak to other people with confidence so between because and so that also things can change so my suggestion to you is write down all the problem statements that come into your mind if it's 155 write down 155 now then work with your mentors a little bit to fine tune what that problem statement looks like because every problem statement could become a hundred different problem statements on its own once you have done that and once you have sort of prioritize what exactly are we going to solve for the next week will become that much easier because the moment i realize that i want to solve for awareness about mental health my how might we solutions will be very different for instance uh, the thirsty crow case uh, there is his reason was to quench the thirst but that could have been solved by various methods i could be like oh i can go give the crow a gps watch so he can find where the next water pool is i can i can give him a backpack with water i could so my how might we solutions can be ridiculously huge but before i get into that i want to make sure i know exactly what i'm solving for am i solving for acceptance am i solving for awareness am i solving for sense of community am i solving for something else all right stopping here um uh i will give it five more minutes for any questions that we have so far uh, it has been a long intense exercise um and then i will give it over to nishan we will take the group selfie and then we can conclude questions concerns inputs what are you thinking is it was this too much should it this been they have been in multiple sessions be very uh, open about it i want to know how you feel uh what i was thinking was that like we are i think three four teams who are working on the same problem mm -hmm. uh almost same problem uh, about mental stress as huh. this is one of the trending thing uh, in today that we realized that it is important so mm. it came and struck many of our minds so i think there should be uh, at least in our teams there should be a session um, more with you that we could be in some more and more to come to the um deep insight of that sounds good i'm i'm happy to do that um maybe nishant tejaj and i can you know figure out a time slot where we can do that any other questions concerns and puts i'm thinking maybe we should have chosen a different problem statement it would have been much more uh, sort of easier to tackle it because it would may have been a little specific so every problem statement you think na like uh, the problem statement once i choose of women safety it was looking easier for me uh, that okay i have to just make a, a women feel safer to go from a place to b place that easy but when i mm. go deep down into a deep down into i was so myself distress distress go, gone into distress that i was no i don't want to do it i will focus on my studies and i will not uh, continue doing this process because it was more of research to come to the solution not building yes. something was but coming to the solution is the and every problem i think would have been the same i i completely agree uh, dipika in fact uh, the joke of the uh, so this is an insight and i'll conclude because i feel there are no more, no more questions um, so there is there is somebody there is an entrepreneur called kunal shah some of you may have heard of it 
heard of him. He's a philosophy major, but he has built companies like Free Charge and Cred. I was I was uh, I was speaking with him over a webinar a couple of days ago, and this is something interesting. He said that India is a nation of engineers, where we have taught everybody engineers and makers and designers where everybody today can build a dam. but we have forgotten the science of finding a river and that is going to be the challenge for us over the next 50 years because all of us if i tell you that oh build a app you oh, build a electronic circuit build a prototype build whatever all of us can just jump into it the hardest part for us to do is to know how to find a river how to look for that problem statement so yeah let's let's focus on this i'm happy to you know spend more time on this and then we'll we'll continue going deeper okay nishant over to you thank you very much rishi this thing was really you know from the better and all but uh, still you know like you did that and i hope everyone feels a bit comfortable with that but still we got uh, you know like lots of uh, what you call area to be covered so that uh, all the people can do this root cause analysis so uh, like thank you very much um, we also learned a lot like get, getting a 100 problem statement in one analysis is man damn that's crazy <laughs> this is just the it beginning is nishan this is mind. trust me this is just the beginning when you spend so when when i'm building the product it has taken us one and a half years to continuously define what exact problem is going on because in the world of products if you're not solving for the exact pain point you will die so like that's yeah it's it's a it's a fun exercise yeah well uh, we will see how everyone goes on anyway so uh, everyone you care about uh, dheeraj Uh, yeah, you're ready to take in the. Uh, yeah, you are the lagging there. I'll repeat. Uh, I'll ask everyone again. Please turn on the camera. We'll take a quick uh, group selfie before we close the session. Cool. Oh, I can see some faces. I don't think we have enough screen space for all the faces to come. No, yeah, we'll uh, probably have to use two screens. <laughs> Kritlin is not visible yet. Akshat is not visible yet. Anusha is not visible yet. Yeah, Devij, Shubhangi, Sanjay. Oh, look who's showing their faces! <laughs> Good morning, Akshat. Good to see you. All right, Anusha is still missing. I need a haircut. <laughs> I don't need a haircut anymore. I just wipe <laughs> it off. Well, finally seeing a smiling face as well. All over. Nice. So, say cheese. Cheese. Well, all right, nice all done. Yeah, I think we're good. Okay, perfect. Thank you so much, everyone. Uh, please feel to continue. Uh, you know, please feel to reach out to uh, to me That's if you have any again. questions. Okay, sorry. Right. Yeah. No, no, okay. Just feel free. Please, please feel free to. Please, please. feel free to reach out to me should you have any questions um again this is not an easy exercise but we just have to continue with it um my recommendation is dump out all your thoughts everything that you have in your mind on this document continue running it as long as it takes because towards the end of the week um say mid week i would like for you to all all of you to have you know done this exercise multiple times a day so you have a solid list of problem statements 
So the, a good problem to have after, so during the midweek will be which problem statement to choose and not how to define a problem statement. So that is where I would ideally like, like for us to get to. All right, that's all from my side. Um, uh, one I'll more advice which I got. Yes, please go on. Yeah, so one more advice that I got is while doing this why exercise, just try to, you know, like, demand se sab nikal do, khali kar do demand. Par aisa socho ki tum paas saal ke bachche ho. Just think like a five-year kid and just ask yeah. any why did you, that comes to your mind. Yeah. And I think that will bring to you to the root cause. Ab pahle se ye mat sochna ki ye ajum kar, ajum kar lena. That, yeah, man, ye, ye toh sab log soch lenge. This can be always the answer. No, don't think of that. Just whatever comes to your mind. And leave all your shame and everything. Sarum the has sab chodo or why kuch ho? Sahi bata rahu. Milega tumhe root cause. Right? Yes. Absolutely. One hundred percent. Yeah. So and uh, one more thing. Uh, uh, today we have uh, what do you call open hour from three three p.m. to five p.m. Two hours ka open hour. Everybody is free to join. It's not compulsory. It's optional. And maybe uh, our mentors are free, Abhijit is free, uh, people can join. We will try to help you with uh, your uh, root cause analysis exercise. We, can, we will try to come up with thoughts and all. Everybody can join in and help each other. Because you see, like all this problem solving and this, it all takes in a community. We all know that So what we, even your team of four, so out of those four, four minds, if we have some more minds working together, we can come up to some great uh, insights and all. So I would request those who are able to join the open hour from three to five, please come and, you know, like combine all our mind and uh, let's uh, like, what you call, give out some great, great solutions. Like some, first of all, great root cause. After that, we'll think, think of the solution. All right, so that sums up till here now. And uh, happy finding root cows. And uh, during the open hour, we can also have some sort of uh, uh, anything. Someone can give a musical performance and all. We can have fun, you know. So let's uh, have that. All right. All right. So see you, everyone. You Thank you very much, Rishi. Bye. Yeah. See ya. All right, guys. See you everyone. Milte hain. Tien baje jisko bhi aana hoga then. Yeah. Thank you, Shaket. And it was nice seeing all those happy, smiling faces. Yeah. All right. See you guys. Bye bye. So Hope to meet you all at three. Now. Yeah. Adin, are you there? Adin.